I have a very special guest with me today, Jeff. Welcome aboard. Tell Thank the folks much. if there's anybody on the planet that doesn't <laughs> know you. Tell the folks who you are and what you do. My well, I'm actually I'm Jeff Hagen. I'm actually the manager of the Fairmont Photo Press in Fairmont. We're a weekly newspaper, um, and but we're also a commercial printer. Um, and I've been doing that actually seven years now. I've been in a manager position. Uh, but before that, you may have seen me on television. I was uh, formerly from the. Uh, 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 focus on Fairmont originally, and then it became hometown focus Absolutely. after that. I did that, oh, 15 years, I think well, it was. 13, 15? I Somewhere around. Something, I did, uh, after 10, it just is the same. <laughs> so. right. Well, you did a great job, and Thank as you. you very well know, we're, we're enjoying showing a lot of those stories mm -hmm. on Martin County on TV. Right. Uh, yeah. And the folks who are sharing with me, they're really enjoying them. Slice of history, some great reporting, some great guests. So thank you for that. It's amazing that what we did with, vol and it was all volunteers. I mean, we, there was two paid positions on there originally, and that was, well, actually three. It was Janet Ruth, myself, and Al Travis. Um, and then it all of a sudden it dwindled down to just Al and myself, and then all of a sudden it was just myself. <laughs> I didn't know if that was something with me or what, but it's amazing what they did with volunteers. But I'm glad you you're, you guys are doing that with uh, preserving the history. You know, there's some great stories uh, yeah. from people. Well, and it's exciting uh, to repeat myself. It's exciting to show them because, as I shared with you before, mm -hmm. when I first saw these, I thought this is this is our history. Yeah. Right on film with people a lot of times who have passed away. Right. Uh, about people who have passed or or still here. Mm -hmm. uh, so it makes it very interesting. Yep. But and thank you for that for sure. make, uh, making that available to us. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so tell us a little more about the paper, kind of the history okay. and how sure. all this. Became. Well, the photo press actually was formed in 1963, in May of 1963 to be exact. It actually was made up, there was 12 owners originally of really? the uh, newspaper. Um, all of them were part of actually the Fairmont Sentinel. Prior to that, they were uh, printers, they worked the presses, and they were also different uh, jobs within the company itself. Ended up that there was a situation that they had a little labor dispute, and so these guys decided, okay, we're going to go out and start our own newspaper, and they started the photo press. Uh, they actually started, their th moniker was that they wanted to have only good news back then already. Really? Uh, so they started that, so it was 1963. Uh, as the years went by, of course, either uh, through passing or just selling, the, the numbers dwindled down. It was Wayne, Wayne Schrader was the last owner of okay. the uh, actual owner. He sold it in 2011. He sold that to uh, Karen and Andy Fisher, okay. uh, who uh, decided they want to continue with the photo press. They wanted to make sure that it stayed uh, uh, in the uh, area that it stayed operating. Oh, that's very cool. And uh, so what we did is we, at that time, and I came on in 2012, in October of 2012, we decided that we wanted to re bring back the good new, the only good news piece, but we also want to give it a fresh look. Um, so we hired a, a gentleman that actually was the one that uh, developed or designed the FedEx logo and also worked with uh, Disney, uh, the nationwide Disney piece. He was the oh. one that, so we hired him to basically come up with a new look and a new feel for our newspaper and uh, actually when he presented it to us we right away we knew that's what we wanted to do and and it's actually picked up uh, over the over the years that we've had it it's really helped a lot we've gained a lot of uh, readers we have a lot of people saying that they read it cover to cover because uh, we purposely throw news items all the way through the newspaper. We want people to read the entire thing, and well, uh, that helps the advertisers. And you too, know, when so. I get the paper, mm -hmm. uh, it, I always find interesting things. Mm -hmm. That's always good news, just like you said, right. and it makes it uh, entertaining. Yeah, it's yep. it's uh, because it, of the local flavor. Yeah, exactly, all yep. the local stories, local flavor. Yep, uh, and it's just it's just incredible. I'm very impressed. I actually incorporated a lot of what I did with the old TV shows by getting guest columnists. Sure. And some of those people I actually had when I was in television, but it's we have a uh, I think I've got 18 different people now that wow. contribute to the paper on various occasions, some on a monthly basis, uh, that, but they all contribute. Lenny Tweeden's one example, of course. great history, uh, perfect for history pieces. Uh, but we've got a lot of people that contribute to it, and it just uh, we get a lot of information from the general public because they want to make sure that people know what's going on. We we figured that the best thing is, uh, I mean, if they want to find out what's happening in the world that's maybe not quite so good, they've got it on their phones, they can oh watch gosh. it on television. It's right at an instant moment. 
why focus on that? Why not focus on what's happening good for people? To, and a lot of times that isn't covered very well, uh, especially locally. So. Well, the and the whole flavor when you're going through it, you go, oh, there's an article by so and so that I know, right? Or I know of them, right? And uh, you read that and learn learn a lot. And by having so many different people involved, mm -hmm. it, it really spices it up every week, right? Actually, the toughest part of it now is getting everything to fit in that we want to because <laughs> we have so much stuff. There's times where we have to. If it's not dated, hold we may have to hold off, yeah, hold off for a week or whatever just because we don't have the space. So, awesome. of course, money plays a little bit of a role in that. Our paper it does not cost. There's no subscriptions. Unless you go south, of course, you can get a subscription. Sure. But otherwise, anybody in the uh, Martin County area, and now even we've in, gone into the Iowa, uh, bordering areas of Iowa, and uh, into uh, uh, western Blue Earth, or Faribault County, and also uh, into the Alpha area, it's all free for those people. But that's because we it's strictly is paid for by our advertisers. Wow. That's why it's important that we we make sure we let the advertiser promote our advertisers in the newspaper because what you see in there, they're paying for the cost of this whole well, thing. Well, and so. nice ads. When yeah, I when I look yeah. through there, they're impressive. They're they're well done. I mean, it, it's not just some little thing you put together. Right. I've got this some very is, good uh, staff. I mean, um, uh, Morgan is our graphic person for the newspaper. She puts actually the newspaper together each week. I give her the all the elements of it, sure. but she arranges it and everything with the ads. Uh, we have Becky, who is our graphic artist, who handle, does work a little on the newspaper side, but she also handles all of our graphics for okay. the commercial print side. Sure. And uh, Sherm is still there yet. He was one of the original owners. He's only part-time now. I convinced him finally to back off so he can do some <laughs> of the honeydew things with his <laughs> wife. Uh, so he's there half-time yet, uh, So, but he's still involved with the organization. Now he has to have some pretty good stories, especially oh, working yeah. with 11 other owners. <laughs> and when you said that, I just cringed. Well, and he talks about how they used to put newspaper together. I mean, it was not like it is now where we have everything is on the computer. You can rearrange oh, ar can everything imagine. and everything. Before Back then, it was all done by, and I have it in my office, it's actually with the old printer's blocks, the old lead blocks. You put all the, the typeset, but the typeset has to be backwards. When, you, when you're putting the story oh, together of because of the way that it goes on the press. Oh, wow. And then they take a picture, and that's what gets, the, at that time, that's what they, uh, the picture itself was what got developed and then printed on the press at that point. So yeah, from what it is now, I I don't know if I could have done it back and then. And 12 opinions. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's, yeah. Well, good for them for making it work <laughs> yeah. and, and making it last. That's sure. awesome. Well, Jeff, as you know, we do a lot of segments from your show and the shows done in the past, and we do that on a segment we like to call... Martin County on TV Flashback. I'm Bob Wallace. We're visiting with Larry Swanson from Fairmont Tamper. And we have a lot of early history pictures, Larry. Let's take a look at those, and you can comment on those as we're seeing and what we're uh, seeing on our video. First video is uh, Frank Wade. That's the first motor car that was uh, built uh, back in 1909. Uh, here we've got on the left, uh, Horace uh, Woolery. He's the originator of the gas engine that we talked about earlier, uh, him and Victor St. John. This particular video is uh, uh, the first motor car, inspection car for the railroad. They're showing the versatility of taking the inspection car off while the trains uh, need to pass. This particular video is from Africa, where we had a specialized motor car uh, that we sent to Africa. Some of these are the newer versions of our motor cars with the enclosed cabs, uh, protection for the employees on the railroad. They had uh, canvas curtains for the sides uh, versus the, the, the plain old uh, no, no protection. This is the first uh, particular tie remover that we had uh, in early times, very simple machine. Uh, now we're going to the engine. That was the originator of the company. Dick Wade, uh, who's a longtime president, is shown here in one of the uh, later motor cars that we had. Here's interesting history. We've got a Link Mobile or a golf cart. Uh, we made those for a while, but uh, because of the marketing issues, we had to, uh, uh, we focused on railroad equipment. And there's a facility. Okay, now and you do exporting all over the world, don't you? Now, yeah. so this we're, we're an export company. About a third of our business uh, goes overseas. Really? Uh, other two thirds, obviously. So, yeah. And we have, we also shot some recent video. The media student production students did shot recent video of a trip to the plant. So let's take a look at that. And Larry, you can comment on what we're seeing here of recent goings on at the Fairmont Tamper plant. Our equipment is customized for each customer. So here we have computer aided design. Uh, 
used in order to design the equipment rapidly and in order to meet their uh, particular uh, timetable. Here we have Erwin Anzenhofer down in our fabricating department. Uh, that's where most of our products begin in order to uh, start the process. He uses a relatively expensive uh, machine that uses a plasma to cut and punch the, the parts simultaneously. Very rapid, very expensive machine. And everything is custom made, is it now? It's all made to order? It's all made to order. We have very few repeat type products that uh, leave our facility. Here we're uh, cleaning up some of the parts in order to go into our machine shop. Machi our machine shop is pretty much self-contained. We have numerous machines, numerically controlled as well as manual machines. In this particular picture, Doyle Schwieger is doing the uh, wheels that we use on almost all of our equipment. Uh, they need to be uh, held to very tight tolerances. Here's a boring mill run by Larry Lash uh, doing one of our booms for our tie handlers. It's like no ordinary tongue there. Uh, very durable equipment. Here's our welding area uh, for our large frames. It's very important because the frames have to be very durable, very accurate, and still flexible to meet the customer's expectations. This video shows, uh, the, the next few uh, show the, the newest Zapper product. It's a, a spike driver. And as you can see, the technology is extremely different from our first, uh, first video. The electronics and the hydraulics are very, very complicated to handle all of the particular uh, jobs that this machine has to do. This picture is showing the machine coming in from our test track, which is west of our facility. And uh, the machines are all tested before they leave our facility. Because of the customization, we need to test them to ensure that the product uh, performs the way the customer expects once they get into the field. Now the facility here, you make a different product than they make down in Columbia, South Carolina? Yes, we have two distinct product lines. Uh, basically we have tie removers, spike drivers, high rail, and rail grinders up in, in Fairmont. In our South Carolina facility we have the tampers and track renewal systems down in, in that particular facility. Okay. These parts are, are strictly the uh, demonstration and rental equipment that we had. Okay, you've gone through a lot in 90 years. Now, what do you see as the most difficult challenges for Fairmont Tamper in the years ahead? The biggest challenge we have, I think, in the future is our customer and our industry has changed substantially. What, what's happened is the railroad industry has merged, and so we have only a handful of customers versus a, a hundred railroads uh, back in the early 1900s. So we have to match their expectations with the technology of today in order to, to meet their customer expectation. And uh, the large customers are very, very demanding today. Okay. So, okay, very good. Thanks, Larry, for appearing on Spotlight on Business. My pleasure. Uh, it's been a pleasure. I want to thank Fairmont Tampa for all the contributions they've made to our community over the years and the ones they'll make in the years ahead. And if any of you would like more information on the history of Fairmont Tampa, be sure and stop down to the Martin County Historical Society where Ken Nelson has put together quite a presentation. Thank you very much. I'm Chamber President Bob Wallace for Spotlight on Business. Martin County on TV flashback. Well, we're back. And uh, tell us a little bit about where you see the paper going and what the future is. Well, things change, as we all know, as society and everything else. But one thing that's never changed, and we still hear it to this day yet, is that a lot of people like to have their newspaper and hold it to read it. Yes. But there are also the younger generation who have everything on their computers, iPads, phones, whatever the case is. So we do actually offer the entire newspaper. It's online. If you go to our website and it's, there's a tab up top that says only good news, you click on that. Not only do we have the current week's newspaper on there that you can view either by what they call a Adobe Flash, which you actually can turn the pages just like a regular oh, newspaper, really? cool or you can view yeah. a PDF, which is just mm -hmm. the entire thing on uh, scrolling up and down. Uh, but we also have archives. Uh, so we can go back, I believe we've been doing archiving for at least three years, possibly longer. Wow. Uh, so you can go back and look at the old newspaper uh, things that we did, uh, along with archiving the, uh, like Tom Palin, who's one of our guest columnists, we have all of his stories, 
uh, Al Bat, um, and Kathy Lloyd, who is our, our uh, cook specialist, sure, sure. cooking specialist. So a lot of that we have on the website. So it, it's we're moving into the electronic age with keeping the fact that we're still a print yeah. uh, business. So. Well, I'm sure, too, uh, people out of the area love that, mm -hmm. as well as right. uh, when you want to revisit a story or yep. see something, that's very cool. Well, and we get to, like, my brother, he's out in Seattle, Washington, or Tacoma, Washington. He wa reads the paper, but it's online. Yeah. So, I mean, this gives the people a chance that if they're down south or if they have family that's out east that maybe not doesn't get the paper, you can have just give them the tell them the website and Share they the website. will. Uh, yep. And speaking of the website, yes, do you have Facebook and everything. Too? We have Facebook also. Uh, Morgan does a great job of keeping everything on Facebook. We have, I believe, we're up to about thirteen hundred followers. Oh my now. gosh, good for you! So uh, we could always use more, but uh, yeah, it's nice to, to do that because we can actually share. Not only do we share our newspaper information and stuff, but if there's certain events that are going on, we try to make sure we put that on there too to help people promote the. If it's What's a, happening? Benefits, fundraisers, you know, whatever the case is, yeah. we we put that on there. So. Well, publicly, I want to thank you for what you've done in the past sure. and the fact you're doing this. Sharing good news in our community is very important. Yes. And uh, your group is doing a great job. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for coming on. Sure. Thanks a lot.